2023 was not for me, but 2024, I've come back for more. This is the Urban Sentinel, and let's get into it. So 2023 was an interesting year for gardening for me. Successes, failures, more failures than anything else. One of the things I had planned on doing was updating my greenhouse and relocating it, but we had a weather event that prevented me from getting that done, which thankfully that's all taken care of. But in the interim, we did have a high wind storm, shall we say, and unknowns to me, looking on the outside of the greenhouse, everything was fine. Now, some of this is just disorganization. The rest of it is the results of the windstorm that blew out this back panel into the neighbor's trees, and I didn't notice it for about two or three days. In that time period, every squirrel, chipmunk, and I believe at least one rabbit got in here, got at the bird seed, got at some of my seed crop, pretty much anything that they could nibble on and poop over, they did. So at this point, this entire area is slated to be pulled out. Most of it's going to be chucked. A lot of the stuff I can rehab. Some of it they didn't touch and other things I'm not too concerned about. So with that being said, the greenhouse is going to be the first major project for spring coming up, hopefully towards the end of March going into April. My next project is working on the garden itself. Now it had a rough time itself. My potatoes didn't do as well as I had hoped. I had some issues with the squash and the beans, but what I did find is overall, I still had better success planting in buckets than what I did planting straight into the ground. Part of it is the soil here needs a lot more amending than what I could put time into it. So the new battle plan is basically going to be pulling everything that you see here out. And then I'm going to lay down weed tarping across the ground, secure that, build up the fence a little bit more because I still have woodchucks that uh, make their way in. Once I get everything cleaned up, I'm going to reorganize the buckets that I do have, and I'm going to be purchasing a few more of these larger barrels and a few more baskets to utilize because they did work well, but during the conditions I was trying to get everything growing all at once, we had several heat waves that I couldn't get ahead of to keep the plants hydrated and shaded, so I need to work on relocating them during those periods. But the overall plan is still about the same. I'll probably add another three or four of these five gallon food grade buckets, at least two more of these larger barrels, possibly a third basket, most of this, as I said, will have weed screening over it, and then I will arrange them in an area along here and this area here to make maximum use of the sun. I'm going to try to figure out a way to do uh, partial sun shading with maybe some light cloth for those days where it's going to be, you know, abnormally hot and bright and sunny. I don't want some of the vegetables to end up getting fried and wilted out. Now, as far as what I'm growing, I'm going to stick to the basics. I'm going to do probably two of a few things, two types of tomatoes, two types of peppers. I'm looking at the beans, which they seem to have done well themselves. So I'll be doing some more bush beans and pole beans, peas. I may do eggplant and a few other things. I'm not going to spread myself too thin. I do want to grow some more greens, though, because I feel that those also were relatively easy to, to manage, but I had to deal with the woodchucks and the rabbits getting into the garden and then going after that stuff. As far as perimeter security, Gary the Goose here, he did not do his job well. He was not up for the task. So I'm going to be changing up the area, probably adding chicken wire along the lower ends of the fencing area. I still feel that overall, most of the predators, as it were, for the vegetables were deterred by the fencing, but I'm also going to be doing uh, perimeter planting of lavender and mint as far as scent goes to help deter them a little bit more. Now, I know you're thinking you should do some traps, and I thought about that, but I have still on my property at least four active separate woodchuck burrows where I've actually seen them show up on my security cameras early in the morning, scooting around, trying to get into the garden and poking about. I could do traps and I will probably end up filling them up, having to drive them out to a nearby wooded area, 
dump them off there and that's a lot of hassle especially if they get trapped after i leave for work they're going to be sitting in there till i get back later on in the day and there's going to be a whole lot of hassle i don't feel like dealing with an angry possibly irate woodchuck you know sitting in a cage waiting for me to show up now it doesn't look like much because right now it's not it's highly overgrown but i'm going to be cutting a lot of this down and the slope by itself is actually fairly decent it's a not too steep of an angle and the soil is still fairly good so i plan on doing some wild planting of a few of the vegetables in part yes for the woodchucks that are there and the rabbits and whatnot for them to snack and nibble on that it's not a humanitarian thing it's just simply i'd rather have them in this area where it's weeds vines and things like that and just dealing with the food that's there than them making their way into the garden where i'm actually trying to grow things now i've got these four posts here which originally i was going to use more or less as climbing supports for uh, pole beans but now i'm thinking i may rig them up and set lines across the top and utilize them to hang small planted items and growing from there basically making a, a trellis across the top area i may change it up i might use deer netting and string it across there and still go back to the idea of using it as uh, primarily for the pole beans and a few other things to grow and cling upon i haven't decided that yet i still have to get some of the supplies the buckets the wooden stakes and things like that and get those set up and it's kind of hard to tell but amongst all of this general mess i've got some water damage from the storm to the plywood and i even have an area here where apparently my guess is the woodchuck or something else started to uh, make its way through some of the softer wood from underneath so i had to use some mesh wiring just to plug the hole a little bit so all this will have to come up and i'll have to figure a way to reinforce the flooring i'm going to end up not completely stripping it down but it definitely needs to be tightened up there are a lot of loose panels and gaps here and there you know i tried patching up with some of the tape just to hold some of the panels in place but it's going to need an adjustment without a doubt primarily i'm looking to do percentage wise 80 percent of everything that i grow in some type of container whether it be the five gallon bucket the large 20 gallon tubs if i use any other type of containment system that's how i'm going to do it i may do a few things in ground directly or in some type of raised bed fashion but to one extent i'm not going to rely too much on that i'd rather be able to control a little bit more of the environment that they're in as best as i possibly can still got a red onion in here it's doing well it's starting to sprout up some more so that's a plus and more than likely similar to that red onion i'll use the greenhouse as effectively what it is the place to seed start a lot of what i'm going to grow and to keep some of the more delicate ones inside at least out of the immediate environment in com in terms of the harsh sun and anything else that's coming around so at least i can close up the vents shut the door if i need to draping things off i thought about that and i tried that before it didn't work out as well as i needed but i also had a lot of drafts through all these cracks inside the greenhouse so the overall plan for this year container garden growing it being able to control what i put in and how big it gets relocated if i need to especially during inclement weather i still have an area that i'm clearing out on my porch on the inside so if whatever doesn't fit within the greenhouse i can then move it to the inside of the house keep that out of the way as a backup especially when it comes to high winds and things like that one thing i wanted to show you the one thing in this entire garden that's still doing well and performing as it should the compost bin this is about the only thing that hasn't been a disappointment or a frustration so far and with everything that i've got in here underneath i've done one or two tillings just to loosen things up during the winter time to make sure that it wasn't frozen but there was no real moisture inside it so it retained its heat quite well so I have a basic plan that I will look to do for all of the containers. So for these five gallon ones, I'm going to probably fill to about here with just regular topsoil 
and broken up lawn debris, things like that, then use already pre-done organic uh, growing soil for pots and uh, raised beds, and then a layer mixed in probably about this much of the compost that I have, filling it up so the whole thing's to about here. Because the primary thing is all the good nutrients, whenever it rains or you water your plants, they go and seep down further. So if you have the highly enriched compost and soil up here, eventually it's going to start filtering its way down to the bottom. So with that being said, even though it's topsoil and other debris down here, that's still going to break apart, decompose, and add to the process. So I'm looking to basically be able to fill and have a full bucket of enriched soil. Same thing with the tub. It's a much larger container to work with, so I'll probably be doing about half of that with lawn debris and then the uh, soil and composting material on top, but again, bringing it up to close to about here. Overall, a lot of it's gonna come down to really planning it out, timing out what I plant, when it starts to germinate, what I need to do to take care of it in the interim until it really gets settled into the soil and starts growing on its own. So it's gonna be a lot of shuffling things around. I may have to stagger some of the things that I plant, not simply to maintain a better yield, but also this way I can alternate and work with the different types of crops as it moves from April into May to June and into July. So I'm not planting too many things later that may be affected by the warmer weather, as well as not waiting too long for certain plants that take much longer to get growing where I want to be able to harvest them as soon as I can. So that's where I'm at. It's a process and I hope you guys stick around to see how it goes. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.